Hey guys. All right. So, next project, I want to pull these wheels off and just take a look at those front brakes, rotors, stuff like that. Um, and also grease the front end while I'm there. There's, you know, some grease fittings under there that need to get greased. And I don't think it's been done in a long time, so I figured, you know something, let's pull these wheels off. I have a big trip coming up. And check out, and just see why they're squealing a little bit. Maybe clean them up with a little brake cleaner. Um, sand them down, you know, deglaze them a little bit. And see if that, uh, that helps the squealing. I know the pads are good, because when they put the new tires on, I had them check them, but it doesn't explain the uh, squealing. What I'm using is a DeWalt electric impact gun. Um, what I did is I bought a torque stick, that's what this is, and you'll see there it's 150 foot-pounds. What that does is, this is actually made out of a spring steel and it absorbs the blow above 150. That ensures that I actually get everything torqued down correctly. The specs on these rims, the 19 and a halves, um, the foot-pounds originally was 140 PSI. From what I understand, they did a service bolt and they changed it to 160. I went right in between with 150. And then if need be, I can just snug them down a little bit or really just drive them really good. Um, I got misinformation when I bought the, the stick because I was thinking that 150 was the, uh, or 155 or something like that was the right amount, but I figure I'd be safe with 150. If you guys think differently, please, by all means, leave me a comment below. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you is you'll notice the simulators here. Some of them are round, some of them are square. Other rigs, they're all square, but you'll notice there's a little dent, indentation, on the flat spots. See that right there? That tells you that's one that has to come off um, so you can get the wheel simulator off first. See? This comes off and then there's your lug nut. So we're going to start by removing these. Then we'll take the wheel simulator off and see what it looks like underneath. Well, I don't have impact sockets. Um, I'm not a mechanic. I only play one on TV, on YouTube actually. So I'm just gonna use a regular socket. Hopefully I don't break it, but if I do, oh well, it's just a socket. You know, something to take these off, I'm gonna take this torque stick off. Because I have a feeling that the tire place over torqued them, is what I'm thinking. That might be the problem with the squeal sometimes. Over torquing can cause a uh, brake squeal. Those are heavy. Yeah, these brake pads look good, but I, I think the, let me show you guys.
these rotors definitely need to be turned. They're not perfect. I mean, they're, they're smooth, but they do have some grooving. Um, so I think, I definitely think having a, uh, either new rotors or have at least have these turned. You'll notice I have some blocks underneath the axles uh, just in case. You know, if a hydraulics line blows on one of these uh, cylinders here, these jacks, I don't want the thing to come crushing down. So, jack stands for this would be rather large. I don't own them. But I figure these 4x6 blocks should do the job. Alright, let's see what I can do here. Alright, a couple things I want to mention here that people might not know. This is your ABS sensor, I believe, and I do have an ABS light on. Um, I'm going to go and have the code read, or I'm going to buy a code reader for ABS. But I want to just inspect these wires. Most times when you have an ABS light on, um, it's one of the wheel sensors are either dirty or need to be replaced or faulty. The other thing I wanted to mention too was the lug nuts on this rig in most 2000, I guess, F53 chassis, that's what this is, an F53, Ford F53 2000. Uh, it's a 13 16 lug nut socket. So if you're planning on doing this um, and you're researching it now like I did with with um, YouTube and Google and stuff like that and how to do it, um, you might, and you're going to use an impact gun, you might want to run out and just get a 13 16 uh, impact socket right off the get-go or make sure you have a 13 16. So now I'm using a regular one only because that's what I have. Um, I didn't have time to run out and get an impact one. If I break it, I break it, you know. The other thing too is when you're removing the caliper or the carrier here, it's a, thir it's a 16 millimeter bolt on the back. So to remove this caliper, you're gonna need a 16 millimeter on the back side here. Right there, okay? So 16 millimeter should do the trick. Now I'm not going to remove the whole carrier. I'm just going to remove the pads. I got to go see if I have a C clamp so I can just compress that cylinder a little bit. What I want to do is I actually want to just clean up the back side of the pad and take a little bit of sandpaper. I got some emery cloth here, which is a type of sandpaper. And um, Just try to deglaze them a little bit. Yeah, let me go get a C-clamp. Um, see if I have one big enough. I was even thinking about that. But. All right, be back in a bit. I do have the generator running this whole time. Uh, hopefully it's not too loud and you guys can still hear me. It shouldn't be a problem, but. I've never run the generator for any extended periods of time, especially with the air conditioning running. So before our trip, I figured I'd do two days running it at least, you know, eight to ten hours a day. Get an idea of fuel consumption, stuff like that. I mean, I, I did do some, some research on, um, you know, gallons, how many gallons per hour, you know, load and stuff like that. But it's, it's kind of hard to visualize that. Um, I only had a three inch C-clamp and that is not going to cut it. So unfortunately um, I have to use a woodworking clamp. Might be alright though, we'll see. You got to be able to do these things on the road. <clears throat> you get a caliper freeze up on you or something like that, it'd be nice to be able to just go to the store, buy a new caliper and be able to put it on even if it's on the side of the road. Now I'm just compressing the pads a little bit um, to hopefully loosen it up so I can get the caliper off but like I said I'm not a mechanic I just uh, try to figure it out as I go along I guess I might have to take the whole carrier off I don't even know to tell you the truth all 
I see the contact points right here where the caliper is on the back of the pad, that rust. That's part of a problem too that, that causes um, noise when braking. So we're gonna clean that up, spray with a little brake cleaner and uh, put some brake quiet, some grease on the back. I'll also grease the slides and just put everything back together. Let your calipers hang by the brake line. So take care and just set them up somewhere or tie them up with a zip tie or something just to keep you know the pressure off the brake lines. Well, definitely plenty of meat. Plenty of meat on those babies. So at least the tire shop wasn't lying. We'll hit them with a little sandpaper. And just clean them up, clean the edges. They look like ceramics. Clean out the groove in the center, that helps keep them cool. When we get back from the trip, I'll probably uh, turn these rotors unless they don't squeal if they don't squeal I'll probably leave them until I actually have to uh, do brakes and then when I do the actual new pads do the whole thing all right so now on the back of the pads I'm just gonna put a little bit a very thin coating of never sees Now, never sees is very high temperature, up over 2,000 degrees. Um, it's a good alternative to brake quiet or uh, silicone grease. All right, pretty friggin' easy, huh? You know, make sure the uh, wheel spins freely, no issues. And then uh, we'll do wipe the surface down with a little bit of brake cleaner again, just to make sure I don't have any never sees or anything on the disc, on the rotors, front and back. Okay, there we go, looks good to me. Now let's take a look at that ABS sensor. All right guys, well, I'm gonna repeat the same process on the other side. If I run into something interesting, I'll, uh, I'll show you guys, but if not, I'm just gonna end the video here. You've seen me do one. The other side is pretty much the same thing. Um, I'm not gonna get into the rear brakes this time. Um, I just don't have the time. It's already 11.21 and I gotta be at work at three, so. I got to get going on that other side, and it's one of the reasons why I'm not going to film the other side. It takes longer when you film. But, all right, guys. Well, be safe traveling the tubes. I'm going to put this wheel on and uh, get the show on the road. All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon.